Hi, my name's John Handley, and we're just going to go run over today um, how to restore a Flanders engine, 1911 Flanders engine. Now this is a monoblock engine. Here's, here's the, um, the block here. Um, no cylinder head, of course. Typical of the engines of 1911 and, and uh, of both British and American design. Um, this one here is built by the EMF company, uh, Walter Flanders Design, and it was carried over into the Studebakers, Maxwell, and of course the Maxwell was bought out by Chrysler, and uh, the last four-cylinder Chrysler about 1924 was basically this type of engine. Now, we pulled it a bit and, uh, and just spread the parts out here, and just going over it, we have here the old piston. Now that weighs 1.3 kilos. Heavy cast iron piston. You can see it's got steam engine design, piston rings, no oil control. I don't know where you'd get the piston rings, you'd have to make them yourself. And so we said, well, I'm not prepared to put that in because it's just too heavy. And, and, and we're going to use this car, so we're going to balance the engine and we want it to run pretty well. So we looked at the various design. Uh, I rang my JP Pistons up in Victoria, in um, South Australia, and I got, he was able to match this one. Now this is off a, a Wolseley, 1911 Wolseley, same diameter as the original one, same top, looks like the same gudgeon height, maybe a little bit higher. Got about $500 a piece, which I wasn't happy with. Oil control ring, two, two compression rings. So then I looked at the Model T Ford piston. This is a standard Model T Ford piston. And yes, it's three and three quarters, whereas the original is three and five eight. And I said, well, we should be able to bore it out an eighth of an inch. Um, but I wasn't happy with the dome top solid. So I went to the catalog and T Ford make a high compression piston. There we are. A little bit different, but only weigh half a kilo. That's the difference. Quite acceptable. Gudgeon pin's about the, the same. That's this Model T gudgeon pin. That's the Flanders gudgeon pin, slightly bigger. Gudgeon heights are a little bit different. Just measuring to the top of the ring here with my verniers. That's 40, 40 mils. This one here, 30 mils. So we've got a 10 millimeter excess rise on the connecting rod here. We need, we should take that up. Obviously you're not going to fit in there. There's a Model T Ford connecting rod. And you can see the difference in them. So, we next went and had a look at the block here. Couldn't see why it wouldn't work. And we've had that reboard. So we've taken that out now to inch and, uh, three and three quarter diameter. My mate bored that out, and it's quite acceptable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut these off here, cut the, the gudgeon pit off the top, and we're going to manufacture another piece to go on the top here to hold the gudgeon pit. And we're going to graft that on, weld that on there. That's the same size as the original Model T here. It's a clamp type, which is quite acceptable. I prefer that, whereas the original one here was a screw in the connecting rod, a screw in the gudgeon pin to stop it from moving sideways. A bit harder to produce. So we're going to manufacture these and we're going to cut that off and we're going to graft that on there and then machine it all up to take the connecting rods. We've made this jig here, and this is going to align everything up. 
We've turned a journal here which is the same as the connecting rod journal. So that'll fit on there and we can clamp that on there. And we can mark here the height. Mark the height here of the, or the distance of the old connecting rod, the old um, gudgeon pin. We can then add 10 millimeter to that. And we can then clamp that down there with a series of, of um, mandrels, put that on there and bolt it to that, and that will give us a length to which we can then weld that on to the right length. Okay, let's go and do it.